I joined uh, Tunbridge Athletics Club uh, as an 11-year-old, so back in 2001. I followed my sister kind of into it. My parents encouraged me and my sister to kind of do sport and uh, keep fit, meet new people. And it was purely for fun. It was, I never dreamt it would become ultimately my job at all. Um, so I kind of did that really. And I was really averagely bad, probably, at most things. I tried running and, and this mad event that is race walking. And it wasn't until my late teens that I kind of got got good a little bit, um, which led me up, up to Leeds Beckett University. Uh, I left Kent as a 19-year-old and went to uni. And uh, that's kind of where my new setup and support we start, started to grow uh, with the kind of medical side of the university, my new coach. And it was kind of finding my feet as trying to be this full-time athlete slash student. And yeah, it led on to competing at the Commonwealth Games as a 20-year-old. And a couple of years later, I made GB team for the European Championships in Zurich. And that was kind of really where my professional adventure began, I guess. Uh, uh, 2015, um, I was selected to be part of the World Class Performance Programme. And pretty much from there, you know, each year's got more exciting and uh, major championships have come and gone and, yeah, become an Olympian and uh, Commonwealth Games silver medal. And it's, I've reached levels I, I never dreamt I would. I think um, every athlete kind of faces similar barriers to start with. I think uh, whilst you're trying to, trying to make it to kind of the professional sort of level, you're always thinking about ways to earn some money, um, kind of keep your off, off field, off track sort of uh, qualifications and things, grow those, grow your CV, whilst at the same time trying to dedicate as much time as you possibly can to training and to, to being the best athlete you possibly can. So there's always those, those sorts of barriers to overcome as a starter. And then I think what's really interesting is if you can't focus 100% on those things, is there something always in the back of your mind or, or you're wasting energy worrying over, that can take away from all of that and perhaps be a key to failing or, or just delaying kind of what could be quite a, a successful athlete or uh, whatever line of work I guess you're even in. And, and for me, many times I had to... I had to come out, you know, it was coming out to my friends at school kind of was a bit of an accident. I was more outed than coming out and led to some pretty rough years. I then, because of that, I think that delayed my confidence in coming out to my parents, which I didn't do until I had kind of moved away from home because, again, I was able to have some freedom and, and to really find out who, who I am. Um, and I did that when I was 21. I decided to come up to my parents then because I felt I had the reason to. I'd met, met my now fiancé. Um, I'd kind of come to terms with it for me uh, and, and kind of my small little bubble up in Leeds and, and my surrounding friends, I guess, all knew it. And it had taken me that long to kind of get the confidence, I guess. Then, in, you know, in sport, it's another whole level. As... I got more and more successful, even though, you know, I was, wasn't in any means a, a kind of main mainstream sort of well-known athlete or anything like that. But I did feel the need to have to come out yet again before the Olympic Games in 2016 um, to kind of do a public coming out. Um, and I guess that, that says a lot about the situation the LGBT community finds themselves in, in sport is it's still it's still not a not a norm at all and uh, just there's no visibility of lgbt people in in sport and, and that's where for things to change we just need a bit a bit more i hate the word norm and the normality but that's what we need and overcoming them was a real real challenge but i look back now and i think maybe maybe that was the difference between me being an uh, averagely good athlete to being able to compete at the front of races and, and challenge for medals and, and become the best athlete I possibly can be because ultimately I'm not wasting that energy and, and worrying about what other people are thinking of me or hiding who I truly am and I can focus 100% on what I want to do and that's, and that's before.
yeah, I think at different points in my life, uh, I, had, I had different sort of support networks around me. And for me, I've always been one of those people who, <laughs> excuse me, people who rely on uh, kind of more my friends and, and uh, the, those networks I create myself rather than reaching out to, to certain individuals or, or a specific um, support network, I guess, which looking back now, I wish I kind of, had the opportunity more to uh you know when i was a student uh, and kind of really coming to terms with everything my my teammates colleagues and and those kind of in charge of of my performance at, at the university were were a huge help and, and support but you know if perhaps i was on uh, part of the world class performance system then i could have really utilized what I now know it, it exists, you know, every national governing body has so many different support networks um, performance lifestyle advices as well are there. And um, you've got in athletics, we've got the UK athletes commission, obviously there's the BAC as well. And there's, there's so much there that kind of, I don't know whether athletes are aware of that and, and it, it can be for anything nowadays, because I think that's, what is so clear to to our governing bodies and those involved in sport is that if we want the best for our athletes you want happy and content athletes in themselves and that's how they become the best um, athletes in the world and that's how they perform at the highest level because you just can't be trying to support yourself as well whilst trying to be a full-time athlete sometimes you need other people to reach out to and whilst I kind of relied a lot for me on my on my fiance he, he changed so much for me as a as a younger athlete when I was 21 22 gave me the confidence to be be who I am not everybody will have that person and so that's why I think these support networks are so important I think there's quite an obvious one for me the the biggest moment um was was publicly coming out uh on, on television I, I think that was kind of it, it never meant to happen that way for me i kind of just wanted to write a blog post and kind of just put it out there as kind of a, just as a just so i could control who who knows what and, and it was from from my heart but ultimately um it, it ended up on tv because it showed it was such a big thing and for me that opened my eyes to to the situation in sport of how, how behind the rest of society it truly is I had no idea even being gay and in sport myself I kind of never really stopped and looked and realized how little visibility there is for the LGBT community so I'm so glad I did that even though it kind of opened me up to a bit more attention I opened my social media up to a lot more coverage uh, which brought a lot of positive messages but also brought a lot of negative messages as well but it made me realize that what I did was something that not many people do or have the confidence to do if I'm honest and um, I'm so so proud of kind of myself and Harry and and my family for supporting me and uh, me through that and it's given me opportunities as well uh, to further my career as a athlete but also as a kind of ambassador for for the lgbt community which i'm truly thankful for as well and I w as i said I, I would never change anything for that but it also led you know a year later to me getting down on one knee and proposing to my boyfriend now fiance uh, on Copacabana beach at the uh, rio olympic games and so i guess you know everything happens for a reason and uh, yeah, i don't think there could have been a better one than that Looking back now uh, at a younger version of me, what, what I'd say to myself is the, the sooner you can come to terms with or, or feel comfortable in your skin um, and, and, and I think more importantly live true to who you are, the better things will get very, very quickly. I look back now and I wish I had never kind of waited so long to come out to my parents. I wish I'd never, uh, I wish I hadn't kind of, beaten myself up for for feeling how I did and and 
I'm trying to change who I am because now I, I, I do look back and think I worried for so many years about who I was and being me that I don't think I realised how much time I wasted and, and I never thought how good things could ever be and I think that's that's the biggest challenge. I now take for granted almost how lucky me and Harry are to live and have the relationship that we do and, and be and do so so safely and, and so happily and I could have had a lot more happiness from a lot younger age and I, and I think to my younger self and to anybody wasting your time and energy on worrying about who you are is absolutely pointless because you are perfect <laughs> you that that's that's all it is there's nothing you can do about it you can't change who you are and you just have to learn to embrace it and the, the more time you waste worrying about whatever it is the more time you are wasting and I'm so thankful that I've got to the point where I have now but but looking back at you know I wish there was a chance I could have accepted that at a lot younger age.